HTTP e tag is a mechanism to validate the web cache in order to improve performance. In this video, we will explain how e tags work and we will also explain their pros and cons and answer the controversy are e tags bad? What's up, y'all? This is Hussein Nasser from iGeometry, where we discuss software engineering by example. And let's get to today's video e tags. This is a very interesting construct. Uh, e tags are ha have been built in order to improve uh, the web caching and improve performance in general. So, so the definition is, uh, I would basically the client. Let's look like let's take a look at the client here. Could be a browser, most probably it is a browser, or an HTTP client that you wrote your own either JavaScript Electron browser, desktop application, anything that uses HTTP in general could be a potential HTTP client. So you would make a request. So it says, hey, you know what? Give me this image or give me this resource, right? Using get or, or post or any other HTTP method. And then the web server says, okay. I'm gonna give this to you and hear it also. By the way, this is that e tag associated with this uh, resource. If you want, you can use it. Keep it, keep it handy because next time you request the same resource, just tell me that e tag and I'm gonna tell you if it changes or not. So, th what does this do by, by just using this uh, mechanism? Now we have gain a lot of performance right because the user or the web server doesn't have to uh, respond with the whole resource like if it's an image and the client says you know what don't don't give me an don't give me that entire image if it doesn't change just just tell me that it didn't change so that's essentially it's a very simple construct it's a very simple contract but it causes a lot of controversy and a lot of problem. People, uh, companies have been using it for bad things. So we're gonna explain that in, in the coming uh, minute or so. But let's go to the example here. So I am an HTTP client, a browser, and there's a REST endpoint here, and uh, I'm requesting user Bob. Hey, just give me Bob, right? Could be any resource, not, not, but in this case, it's a REST endpoint that says user slash Bob. Uh, just give me information about Bob, like, user id a name age i don't know like uh, when was the last time he logged in or what movies he watched anything right it depends on the web server and then you would work with the server says hey by the way this is the json i didn't i i, I cut down the re response here but this is the json response and here's the e tag associated with the bob right and then it's a client responsibility whether the browser or the http client that you write to next time you request the same Bob user, you do the same thing, but you also add a nice header if none match, and you specify that you know as a client Bob is associated with this tag. You 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 did the work to link those two resource together, the resource and the e tag, and then you would make a request and you would ask the user, hey, by the way, if it changed, please tell me. That it change so I can make the decision and move on. Okay. So the server in this case says, by the way, Bob didn't change that resource, that image, that file, that uh, downloadable file, that anything, really, any resource that didn't change, just tell me that didn't change. So this is a very thin and uh, a very fast response, right? The user, the, the server doesn't have to first consume that extra memory to build that resource. It doesn't have to consume CPU resources to build that resource. It doesn't have to send all this big stuff through the wire because, hey, it, doesn't, it didn't change. So why, why send it to begin with, right? So that improved performance and then just quickly responds and uh, the client can move faster. So it improved performance. So it's a caching. As you can see, it's just built-in caching. And instead of building your own caching in the server, you can just utilize that e tag right and yeah just like it tells you that information and that tag that's how e tag works very simple all right however so these are the pros the pros are obviously fast response you get fast response you get less bandwidth you don't have to this saturated bandwidth with stuff that you already have right thus obviously uh for 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 countries that has less bandwidth or, or for companies that has less bandwidth or clients that has less bandwidth 
you utilize this so you get even with countries that has huge bandwidth this is actually really good yeah? you don't have to send something that the client already has all right if it doesn't change just tell me and 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 this is really good if, if you're implementing your own application your own wrist client right utilizing e tags are very critical here so apache what it does like apache server if you have the web server called apache or iis it does its own algorithm to build that e tag right this brings us to the cons really right so before we go to cons one more benefit on this is the pros is con uh, consistency in the databases people have been using this as a tidal bit transaction so i can make a request and guess what it says like uh, you know how uh, i'm going to reference here the the video we did and uh, on concurrency and that in uh, the dbms and the relation of dbms is like how multiple transactions if they are not modifying the same resource they can execute in parallel so you can actually use e tags in that right how so he says okay you know what I'm, instead of doing a get i'm going i'm i'm changing bob I'm, I'm updating certain information of bob but i changing bot on that moment on that e tag right because let's say i'm changing name is a bad idea it's, it's like what, what do we change in bob let's say i'm changing the nickname right bob nickname so you, you, the original nickname is this right at that at the moment you got the e tag and then you say by the way i'm changing bug nickname to something else and that's the e tag that's the moment i want to read from okay if that e tag doesn't match fail please go ahead and fail that means someone between my time reading that resource and posting that transaction someone changed it so if if that e tag is bad just please go ahead and fail so that's another way to control concurrency and and, and then consistency essentially in the database transaction so let's go to the cons right so as we said e tags are generated by the server we kind of as administrator have controls over that we can control how e tags are generated but by the by default Apache like Tomcat server or, or IIS or other web servers as well generate their own e tags based on some algorithm right so the file size the date modified maybe the server that is located on and that lies a problem right a lot of people a lot of websites says you know what uh, please don't use e tag because it's causing a problem so what what problems are is it causing let's explain it so one of the problems that e tags are causing is uh, when it is laying behind a load balancer right so let's just quickly move this below here so what it does here is if you're what if you have like a load balancer setups and this is very very popular setup because you have a load balancer a cluster and you have multiple servers and you're gonna request user Bob all right so the first request because it is stateless you go you're going to web server one and the web server one is okay by the way uh, here's Bob by the way and here's the e tag for Bob I generated to be ABC. I just shortened that. Just obviously it's longer. So Web Server One generated the resource for Bob to be ABC, and it returns to the client. So clients just save that to be ABC. But then it says, "Okay, I'm gonna request again resource Bob, and I'm gonna add that if none match ABC, right? That's exactly how we do it, right? But guess what? Now the load balancer decided to move me to Web Server Two." okay i'm expecting bob will didn't change however web server 2 generated an, another t tag and it says abc is not my e tag sorry it looks like bob has changed bob user did not change it didn't anything nothing happened but the way e tags are generated are per server and that is a problem to a lot of countries i mean uh, companies right if I'm a website and one server generates an e-tag for the for resource A and then another e-tag for resource A for on another server, that's a problem because now e-tags are useless and actually they are an overhead to begin with. Because if I am requesting the same resource and it's generating e-tag every time, then it's a big problem, right? Because now I'm equipping first I'm requesting the same resource 
It didn't change, yet I am adding extra bandwidth, right? And I'm adding an extra e tag header, which is absolutely useless in this case, right? Right? So how do you solve this problem? This problem is not hard, it's, it's solvable, right? But a lot of people just don't want to deal with the headache, right? Uh, that you tell the server basically, hey, there is, this is a, a good configuration, so you have to spend time in the configuration of Apache or IIS or the web server. It says, you know what, uh, if you generate e tags, they should be, you know, the same across all servers, right? So uh, I'm going to link up description below how to do that in Apache and IIS. So it depends, right? So you have to configure your Apache servers to always generate if it, if it a certain resource. If it didn't change, use things that are doesn't rely to the doesn't depend on the server you're on, essentially. Right? So let's talk about the cons. That's the first cons, right? <laughs> Obviously. The first cons is the load balancing problem, but can be solved with the web server uh, if, you, if you configure your web server correctly. Another web, uh, another disadvantage is uh, obviously if you're writing your own client here, right? If you have a browser, you don't really feel it, right? But if you're writing your own application as software engineers, we write a lot of HTTP calls, right? And then as you, as you have to make them E tag aware because that's it, it, the, nothing comes up free, right? So we have to check, like, oh, read the header, and uh, if it's e tag, if it's the same, then request it. If it's not, then uh, delete that cache, and, and, and you have to manage all that yourself. So obviously, it's harder to write. There are benefits, but it's harder to write, so it depends on you, right? So I'm gonna actually ask the question after that. But the last one is, and it's, it's really, really bad, right? Because some companies like Hulu have been using e-tags to track users. So how, how do they do that? So one way you can do that is, is basically, instead of using cookies, because cookies people basically can't delete them, e-tags cannot easily be deleted, you know, because they are managed by the browser. Right, the browser said, oh, "Why would you? users shouldn't care about e tag? This is a, a def, it's an own thing, right? So if I request an image, I, the browser, I'm Chrome or Firefox, I'm responsible to basically keep requesting the same image, and I, I, I'll, I'll take the job for you. I'll take the care of this. You don't have to worry about it. However, companies or websites like Hulu and others have been that was a long time ago. They've been using it to track users, and so they wrote a special e-tag generator at the web server, a tracking server, to always respond to the server by, hey, it did not change. It always responds with the server with this, to always respond with not modified. So this way, the client will keep always, will always keep sending the same e-tag. Okay, what's the benefit of that? If the server always returns this, like for a certain request, certain page, let's say user index.html, if that page, the home page, always returns not modified, and the host says, okay, I'm not, we're not going to change the site, really. We're going to track the server, and then, and then we're going to track the client, and then we're going to return that result. And then e tag, right, will not change. So guess what? The client will not change that either so they will say oh it did not change so i'm gonna keep sending that and guess what this ju you just has established an identity for that session for that client now even if you close a browser you come and restart it and you you opened again you're gonna get you the browser will always send that e-tag because it has it somewhere right it's cached right and then you're gonna send that request and the server says, oh, it didn't change. So now, the web server can use that e-tag to track you. It doesn't ha it doesn't know your name, doesn't know your no information, but it knows your behavior. Oh, dad, oh, he's, he's more, he, okay, he's watching House of Cards, he's using, are you watching, I don't know, Fixer Upper, all these shows now, okay, he's watching all this stuff. So now they build, they don't need to know your name. Even if you're not signed in, they don't care. Right? They just use that e tag. That e tag is someone lives in Minnesota, 
Okay, and he likes to watch uh, Game of Thrones. Everybody likes to watch Game of Thrones. That's not uh, an argument here. But yeah, comment if you don't, dis don't disagree. <laughs> but yes, so they can use that e tag. If it's always you, the browser gonna always send it, then that's your identity essentially, right? And that's bad. So the, a, a lawsuit had been filed for them because it cannot be purged. And then I think Chrome try, uh, now included a way to purge even e tags in their system. All right, guys, been a long video. Hope you guys are enjoying. And I'm gonna. Shift the question to you. What do you think? Do you think e you, are you even using e tags in your clients? Have you ever used it? Is it useful? Do you see it? Uh, do you see it like uh, using e tags will improve your uh, application per performance in general? What do you think? I mean, and uh, I personally have used it. ArcGIS Pro actually uses e tags, and the uh, if you if you use your ArcGIS Pro, which is an Israeli application, ArcGIS Pro uses e tags to cache resources right and uh, yeah guys uh, I personally didn't develop an application using e-tags but I don't mind it if I use it in a, in a correct way I can so save myself a lot of trouble coding at the server caching mechanism and instead using that built-in HTTP mechanism all right guys you stay awesome uh, let me know what you think in the uh, comment below and I'm gonna see you in the next one if you like this video consider subscribing and uh, Like this video if you like it add any uh, ask any questions you want and check out the other contents of this channel IGM tree will always discuss software engineering by example a lot of cool stuff here to become a better software engineer And I'm gonna see you in the next one. Have a good day